all right. So back to the docks. Oh, actually, no, yeah, docks rather than the marketplace this time. That's a lot of boats coming for us. Holy crap! All right, the docks. Here we come. Wagner. A familiar vol stops, steps onto the docks. In your mind, you recall a much younger version tramping the halls of Grofheim, abundant in purpose. Gods, Ubin, you're looking ancient. Man, this guy looks awesome. Comes with being old, and if and if there is Wagner, there must be a ha Hakon. Must there? Hey, that guy looks also pretty cool. Still bleeding tributes from the poor and stupid old Yox. At what age do you lose a sense of shame? Yo. Jorunder de Mansit. I'll take that over lingering to death in Grofheim. Speaking of, I had no sense that you were so far from home. Just returned from Arborang, in fact, and glad for it. Hakon motions to the other ships in the bay, sails still fluttering, golden wolf head emblazed, emblazoned on red, the king of men or someone on his behalf. The king's whelp. The king's son, Ludin, don't you know? Sh Scrivener? Scrivener? What the fuck is up with all these words in this game? We visit his capital, he visits ours. It's how you, it's how you make alliances these days. It's a miserable waste of time. Yes, Hakon, it is. You had almost forgotten. It's a good thing you're around, Hakon. Then you're going to Grofheim. I have the distinct feeling I finished my business as Strand and was heading there myself. We should caravan. We should. Give it a day. In better circumstances, I'd drink a week away. But ah, let's just be done. Find me tomorrow at the gates. What he's trying to say is the prince is a delight to behold. Where is Mogger? Hakon, have him find a place to put up the warriors. I'm heading up to meet the governor. A host of giants depart in his wake. You recognize a few, others are strange to you. Guess I'm off to find Mogger. See you in the morning, Scrivener. I'll be along. The young prince of men ambles from a ship. He brushes off his tunic, scanning the beach with low eyelids. Ludin looks for all the world... All the world, the sort of boy who grew up pulling the legs from spiders. The long road to... Back to Grofheim should be more interesting than the most years, you think. Wow. So much reading. <laughs> right, weariness suddenly settles in and you chuckle to yourself about what an odd day it has been. One of the governor's men at the Great Hof uh, could find you a place to sleep. On the other hand, if you're going to join Wagner's caravan tomorrow, it might not hurt to share a drink of Akon or introduce yourself to the prince they spoke highly of. Aha! So I can go to sleep. I can meet with the prince, I assume this is, and I can meet with Hakon. I think I'd rather have a drink of Hakon. Scrivener. You find Hakon in a meat house surrounded by other Varl. Strand is no stranger to Varl, but rarely sees this many. Hakon waves you over. Went straight for a flagon. Wagner's the one who agreed to pass up a drink. I wasn't invited to the governor's hall anyway. You already missed the massacre. Every year I make the rounds collecting taxes. Every year it's the human settlements that give me trouble. No surprise, what this time? When I got there the hall was already full of bodies. We added a few more. <laughs> ha! Humans. I guess if only if I only lived as long as a yux fart, I might desperate be desperate to make something of myself too. It's not late to start trying, Hakon. Uh Hakon let slip a low chuckle. Ha <laughs> ha. Any Vral could recount his deeds, no known as he is for cutting a swave through dredge at Wagner's side in the Second War and regularly since then. Down here, I'm a glorified bodyguard. You might have a point, just another reason to get back to Grofheim. Soon enough, I imagine. You drink until the meat house becomes meat house becomes overbearing, and step back into the cooler air outside. All right, that was an interesting drink we had with him. Now, oh, we can still meet with the prince as well. We might as well. Fuck sleep. Who needs sleep? Is this the right place? You find the prince at an inn. Guards blanket the building, including a sharp-eyed Varl who must be working for Ludin. A woman in red eventually waves you over and stands nearby, arms crossed. Greetings, Prince Ludin. Prince? Oh, wait, didn't it say you read out a female? Whatever. Yes, you're with Wagner. I don't remember you. Not exactly. I've known Wagner a long time. I'll be joining you back to Grofheim with my guards. Ludin looks up for the first time. The woman doesn't react. Why? I work for the king, carrying tiffs to the capital we crossed by chance. Oh, a tax collector. Fine company. What do you want? I uh, hope to learn more about you. I have a habit of recording history. I thought we might talk about your visit, just to introduce myself, really. You collect taxes for the royal territory. It's a true pleasure. Yes. An awkwardness hangs in the air like thick fog. You take the opportunity to depart. Damn, I must have screwed that conversation up. Probably should have uh, chosen another option, but hey. This is how we do. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys read that at the beginning. The game does take your 
um, your choices and the game changes depending on the choices that you make. Anyway, let's go to sleep at the Great Hall. At dawn, you're woken by delivery of goods, or at least you think it's dawn. Damn hard to tell with a sun that never moves. The governor's crust adorns the supply letters, all there, just as promised to your mild surprise. You wonder if Eric had anything to do with that. 20 renown, nice. Your, the, your guards take the treasure wagon down to the gates. Fogner's already there a while later. Lude and his men appear groggy and disheveled. Mogur steps forward. Fogner's quartermaster, if you recall correctly, in charge of his unwieldy entourage of warriors. You know him only in passing. He asks us if you're ready to report. We're ready, apparently. We have no option. You follow Mogur and join the others. Usually the smaller doors set into the gates would be enough to enter or leave the city, but the town guards have been told to push them open entirely. They mutter things under their breath that are best not heard. Perhaps the governor expected you to draw a crowd, but there's nothing of the sort, just for the frustrated, tired people. It summarizes strength well as a whole, you think. Alright, so I guess we're moving. Oh, right, you can actually see the day moving here. Two days. Whoa! We just went out of 66. We just had 99, didn't we? Let's see if it moves down a shit ton again. Holy shit, we got a lot of fighters of Brawl now. The caravan stops for the day. A gift, says Mogger, cracking open meat casks from our gracious friend, the Governor of Strand. Hours, hours pass with ra raucous laughter as the meat is passed through the camp. Uh, we'll toast to Wagner. You raise your drink, toasting the alliance between men and Varl. The others join in. Luden's expression is like a stone wall, but the others laugh at your exaggerations. Eventually you sit down beside Wagner. Um, we'll chat. Thanks for the speech, Lars Wagner. Hey, no, no problem, I guess. Looks like you didn't have, uh, didn't have to miss out after all. Thanks to Mogger, I thought the damn governor would never shut up. Did he give you the history of his entire family? He tried, but then he asked me to clean up his mess for your benefit, turns out. I'd have given you a job, too. I've I'd given a job to you, too. Gods, there's no joy in politics. Speaking of, what happens after this business with Ludin? Hopefully the boy goes back to Arborang on his own, and I can take out some frustration on Dredge or something. Starting to sound like Hakon, or Hakon, or whatever I just called him before. You don't like the life of a diplomat? Haha! <laughs> Don't you miss the fight, Ubin? You down your meat instead of replying. Wagner slouches and shakes his head. There's no great joy in killing, killing Dredge, but this, pretty sure this nonsense is some scheme between the two kings to force some kind of lineage. Used to be, warriors would follow you for what you've done. Isn't that what they follow you now? Isn't that why they follow you now? Is it, or is it because I'm the next in line? These lines are getting muddy, old Varl. They've always been muddy, Wagner. Fognir stars into the campfire, lost in thought, you leave him to it. Alright, I don't want to drink too much though, I want to be drunk in case a fight happens. Ah, where are we? Wait. You rise groggily, the campsite, a casualty of merriment. Mogger is already kicking while he's awake when you spot Ludin take stalking your direction. He sidesteps sl sleeping bodies, better wake up. You nudge Fognir, you need it. Ah, it's Ludin, always a pleasure, you look well rested. Fogner releases a caged yawn and receives a hard-eyed stare in return. How long to Grofheim? Ha! We're only two days out of Strand, you know. Come, I'll show you on the map. Ha! Alright. Waiting for the map. The map's obviously very detailed. <laughs> According to the loading screen. Ah, here we go. World map. Click and drag the mob. Uh, map to look around. The portrait icon shows where your caravan is in the world. You can also click on the any location to get some history about it. When you're done with the map, click it. X at the bottom of the screen. Damn. That's a pretty sizable map. It's got some information about Dunder's beard. Okay. I just wanted to see what it actually showed. <laughs> Didn't actually want to read it. Fucking hell, that is a massive map. Holy crap. I didn't know this, this game is going to be this big, which is fine, by the way, just saying. Alright, cool, and there's Strand. Alright, uh, X, there it is. Find the, <laughs> find X, there it is. We head north, then east, past the forts. Grofheim's far from Strand, going to be a long march. You should have a drink last night, Ludin. Why not take the ships to 
Skrymirstead. What's the point of marching? The Silverstone Bay is called that for a reason. It covers... It, it stays covered in ice all year and would tear up the longships. Too bad though, we could have shown you all the wonders of Skrymirstead. A half sunken city crawling with dredge prints. Dredge and glaciers. You like glaciers? Lunex hills for the nose, a poor disguise for his contempt. He turns and bats aside the, his, the tent flaps as he goes barking at his company in the distance. Don't poke the ant hill, Wagner. He seems no happier to be here than you. Spend a few... Sorry. Spend a few more days with the boy, old friend. You'll be looking for a tall cliff to hop off to. Lillian's got a shorter wick than Hakon. Thanks, Wagner. Let's get moving another half day to Vedrafell if we're lucky. Alright, we're gonna finally start moving again. Camp is where you manage the caravan. During travel, you can enter the camp at any time by clicking the camp button on the travel hut. That seems, seems to make sense. While at camp or in towns, you can upgrade your allies or equip items in the hero's tent. You can pass time by using the rest tent. Resting will improve the caravan's morale. A high morale will reduce casualties in war and affect your willpower in combat. Each day passing will use supplies, so only rest when necessary. The training tent will allow you to safely try out any characters in a mock battle. Click leave on, at the bottom of the campsite when you're ready to get back to the road. Alright, hero's tent. Let's have a look then. Click on the unit to view stats, promote ranks, and learn about abilities. Gunolf. Because he leveled up. Click on the ability to learn more about the unit's abilities. That makes sense. Warhawk. The Warhawk uses a massive weight to sweep his weapon around himself, hitting multiple adjacent targets. Friend or foe. Ah, friend or foe. There you go. For normal strength damage. Uh, right, so the more ranks you put into it, the more enemies you hit. Tempest triggers the Warhawk's passive ability. Heavy impact, which in turn can cause chain reactions of destruction used in close quarters. Creeping the Warhawk out of harm's way until late in the fight will maximize his effectiveness. Yeah, he's obviously fucking melee or a damage, not tank. Okay, cool. You did get a promotion now. I don't have any points available, so I'm not sure how you use the promotion. Promotes! Uh, the greatest warriors on the battlefield are those who live in the past our battles and first battles to start a journey down the path to legend. Build higher stats to increase your item rank. Five, I don't know what this 5 means. Are you sure you want to promote for 5 or none? I don't know. <laughs> Let's have a look at the other, but oh, hold on, what does this say? Uh, oh, it's just uh, some info. Well, I, I think I do want to promote this guy, but let's have a quick look. Alright, so we got Ludin as well, even though he's like a king, or what was he, an emperor? I don't know what the fuck he is, but some sort of leader. Alright, so this is our renown. So you spend renown to level your guys up. Okay, but we can't actually level this guy up, for example, because he's not actually haven't had any battles yet. And Mogger, same. So where, where, is, where are we in this... Uh, yeah, where where's us? Oh, here's the turn order as well. That's useful. I don't think we're here. Anyway, I'm going to level you up. Uh, Yeah, let's level you up. Right, we've got two points available now. If we level his ability up... Wait, hold on. If I click this, does it... Okay, no, it doesn't. Right, so how do we actually improve it then? I don't know what this means. Oh, that's his, okay, that's his uh, passive, right? The warrior hits so hard that enemies standing adjacent to his target are strength. Uh, attack take one strength damage from the shockwave. Ah, that's what I saw. So after he, he did his ability, it it basically hit them again for one damage. Hitting a large target like a rural dredge who takes up four tiles can potentially cause an impact across more many more victims than hitting a single square target such as a human. Uh, okay, adjacent to the target, right, cool. So how do I level this ability up, though? Um... No, that's not the way to do it. Wait, if I right click, no. Promote. Can I promote him again? For 10. Build higher stats for everybody. Uh, yeah, go for it. Now he's level 3. Damn, this guy's gonna be amazing. I've got 4 points available, I don't know how to spend them. What's this? No, I don't, no, 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 cancel. Oh, wait, hold on. So, oh, I can't improve this. I can improve this and that. Right, okay. Okay, I see. I can improve all these things, but I can't improve the ability. The ability just gets improved when you level up. Because it said the third time I leveled up, it's or the second time I leveled up, it said higher ability rank. Right. Um, it doesn't cost willpower to do this, does it? It's just an ability that you can use every time. 
So we can give him more armor, we can give him more strength, we can give him more willpower, we can give him more exertion. Exertion will be good. Let's give him two points of exertion. I don't know what this is, though. I want more info. Ah, here we go. <laughs> info. Um, right, armor blocks damage. Your strength is uh, minus their armor is damage. Your strength minus their armor is damage. So their strength minus my armor is damage. So the more armor you have, the less damage you take. Makes sense. Um, strength of most damage and health. Strength of possibly, yeah, okay, right. Willpower spending, yeah, we know that. Exertion is the amount of willpower you can use on any given action. Break is the amount of direct damage you can naturally do to an enemy's armor. Okay, I don't really care about that, because this guy's just going to go right through armor. Stats max, uh, stats plus max stats is the current amount of points added to this character next to maximum, um, next to the maximum amount of points allowed to occur. Okay, cool. I got this. All right, I do want to get to exertion. Just fucking max that out right away, because then means I can move further. So then I want to get some uh, willpower to back that up as well, I think. And I could just go for uh, one exertion right now, one willpower. I get two points in strength. Um, because I mean, I need some willpower to actually be able to use the exert. Otherwise, like if I have two exertion but only three willpower, I, I can just do it once anyway. So I'm probably better off doing one and one, and then two in strength for now. Uh, right. Yeah, I don't really care about. Oh, I you know I do care about armor for not dying, but I care more about strength. So yeah, I think this will work. We'll confirm this. Okay. Now no one else has leveled up, so yeah, we're going... We're done, I think. Here. I hope. I hope that was an alright level up, I'm not sure. Right, so then, uh, we still have great morale, we have 60... I don't know how the supplies went down so quickly, but I guess I'll just have to deal with it. Right, so that's the map. We can do some training to see how good our men are. We can rest. Uh, this is the hero tent. And how do we actually... This is how we leave? Yeah, leave, right. Is that everything? Let's have a quick look at the uh, at the training. And our morale is great, so I'm not going to rest right now, because it'll just cost us food for nothing. Unless I can go higher than great morale, but I don't know. We'll find out later, I'm sure. Right, okay. Training tent. The training tent allows us you to test your party against a team of clansmen of equal power. Training fights never injure your allies or grand renown, but they do let you test your strategies and safety. The training will give hints about playing effectively and have something to say about each ability. Come here to test out the new characters as they join you. Click end training to stop the battle at any time. Right. Ready, Freddy. Right, first off is Mr. Awesome Guy. Who can move here and attack this guy right away. 10 and 12. Okay, so this is like a shield guy. Just has a lot of armor. Well, he's the only one we could really reach, so let's just go for him. Uh, okay, we're going to have to use one of our... We also start on 6 out of 4 willpower. I don't know how that happens. I'm not sure what gives us the extra 2. But yeah, we'll move here. And then we'll uh, attack him for 5, sure. I uh, could have attacked him for 6, but this will do. Did we take one armor damage here? We did. Oh man, this guy can move. Oh my god. Holy shit. Uh, that's not good. Can you already attack him? You can. Well, you're fucking useless, aren't you? Do you have an ability? You do. Impale. Oh, you can only... Okay, well, move uh, over here. I think. Is that the best way? I mean... If I move here, then... Uh, yeah, this will probably be better. Alright, now impale this guy. I don't know what it does. We're gonna do it. Sundering impact. 100% to hit, plus one strength, plus one break to target, plus one break to heavy impact. And bold, no, impale, impale. Knock back one tile, target leads one strength, remove on next turn. Uh, okay, that's pretty cool. It won't actually hurt this guy, because he's not gonna move. But... That's pretty cool. We'll do it anyway. Alright, this guy's gonna slap someone in the face. Force shield damage. Right, now we got this guy. This one I'm, is the one I'm wondering about. I always think I had uh, your next move of Master. Thanks for leaving, leaving that up long enough. Right, I'm gonna go over here. And just smack this guy. Wow, what's Sundering Impact? Sundering Impact, that's the same thing as we saw before. How much if you just hit him in the face? Four. That's really not a lot. 
Go for a uh, go for sundering impact as well. There you go. That's better. Man, this guy's gonna die soon, and he's my main my main man. I think we're better off just uh, focus firing on this guy here. So let's let's move over here, and then uh, bring the pain. What's that? Bring the pain. Break damage to target plus one to return the favor. I have no idea what that is. But we'll do it anyway. Okay, that's really not good. Right, can we finish this guy off? Wow, we can't, because this guy is nearly dead. Although I can actually use his ability, can't I? I don't think we'll hit that guy, actually. Um, Go for it. Okay, because he's nearly dead, he really doesn't do much damage. Yeah, he's dead now. <laughs> Alright, he's quite useless. We're gonna knock this guy back, because he's gonna be able to- he's gonna have to move. And he's gonna take damage for every step that he's gonna take. See? One damage, one damage. So that's a useful way of moving that I guess, or using that, I guess. Right, we can, uh, can we finish this guy off? Seven. Can we... yes we can, actually. Oh. Oh, he's being smacked in the face. Oh, he took damage in armor, armor down. You might be able to finish him off. No, you cannot. Nope, you can do two damage to him. Um, well, in that case, what's your ability? Oh, you have the shit ability, don't you? Bring the pain. I don't really, I don't really re- I, I don't understand what all, what all this means. Break damage to target. Plus one to return the favor. I don't know what that return the favor is. Um, so I'll just... I think I'll just let's attack him for one, though. No, that's not worth it. Yeah. I don't know. Could attack his armor, but he's nearly dead, so I don't know. This guy can easily finish him off. Okay, let's just do the special ability again, just to see. Okay, we attack his armor for two. That's really not that good. Right, you. You need to uh, impale this guy again. This ability is actually pretty useful. Does one damage, plus he wants to move again. He's going to take another damage. It's not bad. Right, this guy is nearly full. I don't want to. I want to kill this guy off first. So we'll kill you for five. Get him out of here. Get me out of here. Okay. Yeah. Why? Well, that fucking took a lot of damage. All right. Um. Are we gonna impale him again? I think so. He's not. He, he's like he really doesn't do any damage, so the impaling is just better because it does two damage instead of the one. Because it does one here, and then he's gonna move, which takes another. So it's two. Plus an armor, it seems. Man, he just got fucking slapped around. All right, you do a lot of damage. How much do you do? do two. That's really not that good. What about your sundering impact? Go for it. There you go. That's better. Oh man, they're gonna focus fire on him. He's, probably, he's not dead yet, but he will be soon. Uh, I'm gonna do two damage to him. By doing the impel again. Or I could move away, but he can just walk around and get me anyway, so I don't think that's worth it. We'll do, uh, oh. We'll do impel on him. Fucking practice battle, I can't even win this. Oh, he's, well, I'm dead now. Wait, no, I'm not dead yet, holy shit. Three, and you can hit him for five. I think that might be worth it. Yeah, let's do that. Because then you can finish him off next time, and then he can kill this guy off as well. He's on one health, so he'll be dead soon. Right, he's dead, but this guy's dead. This guy can hit him, but he won't kill him. Oh, he died as well because of Sundering Impact or whatever. Yay, we did it! Even though it was a practice battle, it was still pretty tough. I mean, they said it was going to be uh, enemies of similar strength, so... Anyway, I think I'm going to leave it right there. Because um, I don't I don't want to record for too long right now. But this is pretty, pretty fun. I'm really enjoying this, actually. I hope we can do some more actual fights soon. I just wanted to do the training just to see how everything went. And now I've, I can really see against stronger enemies. I need to I need to keep that two-handed guy, like back. 
the the one who died first because he's so strong but if you like obviously get him killed early on it's fucking wasted but anyway yeah i'll leave it there so i hope you guys enjoyed this so far first few episodes of uh the fuck's this game called again <laughs> saga something the banner saga there you go the banner saga that's what it's called um yeah and i'll, I'll see you guys next time have a good day bye, -bye.